بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد So inshallah ta'ala we are here with what is going to be the last names of Allah session before Ramadan break As for after Ramadan I'm hopeful we'll be able to continue Although we may not have the same schedule as we have now It may not be every two weeks It may be uh, once a month Or it may be, it may be on a it may be slightly different, different schedule But inshallah ta'ala I'm hopeful bi'idnillahil kareem We're going to inshallah ta'ala be able to continue the names of Allah After uh, Ramadan if all, if all uh, goes well Bi'idnillah but in any case, this is the last names of Allah before Ramadan. Next Friday, we have something a bit special, inshallah. So next Friday, we have our Rukia workshop. So it's... Uh, the details you can find properly on the Kalima website, but I believe it's at al Ghurair uh, University. It's going to be... Um, it's usually something like 9 o'clock until 6 o'clock But again you can get the, the exact details from the website But this time we're going to be doing a journey through Allah's revelation So what we're going to do is we're going to have a workbook Which covers all of the ayat and the ahadith of Rukia And we're going to go through them one by one And understand Rukia from the ayat and the ahadith So inshallah I'm really looking forward to that And uh, if you guys want to register you can, wherever you can register, you can speak to one of the guys at reception, inshallah ta'ala, when you leave, or you can register via the website, uh, and so on, inshallah. For our class today, on the names of Allah, we have Al-Mu'min, and we have As-Sadiq. We have Al-Mu'min, and we have As-Sadiq. So the first thing that the Sheikh is going to talk about is where this name comes or these two names come in the Quran. And the Sheikh Hafizahullah Ta'ala he says the name Al Mu'min comes in a single ayah in the Quran. And I think most of us know the ayah. Huwallahu Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir, Subhanallah, Amma Yushrikun. Then the Shaykh, he says, the meaning of Iman, the meaning of Iman, and we're going to hear, and I, and I don't know, uh, I don't know whether uh, the Sheikh is going to go into this in any detail. I think he is later on. That there are two possible ways of understanding the name Al Mu'min. Either we return Al Mu'min to Al Iman, and we have Al Mu'min as, as relating to Al Iman. Or we have Al-Mu'min relating to Al-Amn. So either Al-Mu'min relates to Iman, which is relating to faith, or it relates to Al-Amn, which relates to like safety and security. Both of them, from these two words, you can produce the word Al-Mu'min. You can produce the word Al-Mu'min from both of these two words. You can take the word Al-Iman and get out of it Al-Mu'min as we do with the believers. Qad aflah Al-Mu'minun. The believers have been successful. And he returning Mu'min to Iman. Or we can return it to 
Al-Aman Which is safety and security And we can take it from that point of view And the Shaykh is going to talk about both of them How they apply to Allah Because of course we can't say mu'min as we say mu'min for us Because that doesn't make sense right To say about that Allah is a mu'min A believer in what? A believer in himself? No it doesn't make sense to say like that So the meaning must be something different So the scholars had two ways of understanding it One is a, is a different meaning of iman like To take iman in a different way to the iman of us To see iman in a different way to our iman and the other is to say that it doesn't come from Al-Iman But it comes from Al-Aman It comes from security and safety The one who gives it So let's see how the Shaykh breaks it down And we come to understand this name So he said Let's look at the real meaning of Iman He said the real meaning of Iman Can be summarized in two words at tasdiq Wal-Iqrar So At-Tasdiq means to Affirm the truth of something To affirm The truth of something And Al-Iqrar I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna find the right word for it I would only say about Iqrar Like to To uh, We'll come to it we'll come, I'm going I'm to find the, cause I, Again it's, When you're talking about Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala You don't want to use the wrong word The word that maybe applies to the To, to, to people But He brings Iman into two things And then he says This necessitates Guidance And believing those who are Truthful and establishing proofs for their truthfulness So now see how the Shaykh has taken a different Understanding of Iman here He's not taking the Iman that we know Al-Imanu Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rasulihi wa Al-Yawm Al-Akhir Wa Al-Qadari Khayrihi wa Sharri He's not taking Iman like the six pillars of Iman He's taking Iman as what does the word mean So Iman necessitates Guiding and affirming the truthfulness of the truthful ones So when Allah Azza wa Jal tells you that the prophets told the truth That is a kind of Iman When Allah tells you and proves to you the truth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Through miracles and signs That is Iman It's not the Iman of a human this is Iman as in the linguistic word Iman You are proving the truth of something You are affirming the truth and showing and demonstrating to the world The proof that something is true And so from that point of view Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Mu'min from Al-Iman Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Is the one who, affer- who establishes the truth Perhaps that is the best way of describing it And he's a mu'min in here Who establishes the truthfulness And affirms the truthfulness of, of his messengers And sends them guidance and proof and evidences To show that they are truthful so from this Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Mu'min And Allah Azza wa Jal Is as he praised himself And above What his slaves praise him And for this reason Mujahid Rahimahullah Ta'ala said One of the great scholars One of the students of Ibn Abbas Radiallahu anhuma He said Al-Mu'min Is the one who declares to everyone that he is one And he affirms the truthfulness The fact that he is one He declares to everyone that he is one Saying Allah testifies 
that there is no God that deserves to be worshipped except Him. So when Allah testifies, when you testify to something, what are you doing? When you testify to something, you are telling the truth of it, right? You are telling, when you stand in court and they say, the judge says, will you testify to that? You are testifying to the truth of something. You are saying, this is true and I'm a witness. Okay, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Shahid Allah. Allah bears witness that there is no God that deserves to be worshipped except Him. So Mujahid here, very subtle, very subtle the link. How he saw the link between these ayah. He said, how do we define Al-Mu'min? We define as the one who affirms the truth. Who is the one who affirms the truth of something? A witness. And Allah declares Himself to be a witness. Shahid Allah, annahu la ilaha illahu. Allah bears witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Him. And from that point of view, Allah subhanahu wa taala is al mu'min from al iman, yani from the meaning of iman, the linguistic meaning of iman, and not the religious meaning of iman. From the linguistic meaning of Iman, not the religious meaning. Because the religious meaning is for you to believe in Allah. And that's not what is meant here. What is meant here is the linguistic meaning of Iman. Uh, to attest, I think Iqrar we can say to attest, to affirm, to attest to something. To attest to something, to affirm something, to show something to be true, to witness something to be true. So from that point of view, looking at the Arabic language meaning of Iman Then we can say that Allah is Al-Mu'min from that Angle He says this testimony Of Allah Is a great And noble testimony From the greatest witness Is there any witness Greater than Allah Is there anyone greater than Allah Any witness, human being When you witness something Can you witness it completely can you witness it 360 degrees and he fall all the way around with hearing everything, seeing everything, knowing everything, knowing the details of what's happening? You can't. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest witness because he knows what is in the hearts and he hears everything and he sees everything. There is no witness greater than Allah. And also there is no one more truthful than Allah because the other thing you need from the witness, first of all, a witness should have the, the observation of what happened Should have seen it and heard it And the second thing is the witness should be truthful وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا Who is more truthful in speech than Allah? Nobody is more truthful than Allah وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا Who is more truthful than Allah in what he says? Nobody is more truthful than Allah So the greatest witness is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because Allah azza wa jal sees everything and hears everything and knows everything And he is the most truthful in speech And therefore he is the greatest witness And he witnessed the greatest thing He he gave witness to the greatest thing La ilaha illallah There is nothing greater than la ilaha illallah Nothing is greater than La ilaha illallah That there is no God worthy of worship except Allah So Allah is the greatest witness And he's witnessing The greatest thing And he's giving his, his testimony He's not giving his testimony for some small matter About you told the truth Or your friend told the truth He's giving testimony For the greatest matter that exists La ilaha illallah Shahid Allahu Annahu la ilaha Illa who? Allah Azza wa Jal testifies that there is no God worthy of worship but Him. For a benefit, I'll just add to that. What's the continuation of the ayah? Wal malaika wa ulul ilm. And the angels and the people of knowledge. Look at the honor the people of knowledge get in this ayah. To be mentioned along with the greatest witness and the greatest thing that can ever be witnessed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put himself and the angels and only one group of people along with them. The people of knowledge. And this is a huge incentive to be among people of knowledge and to learn your religion. Because you get to be 
from the greatest of the witnesses and the greatest of the witnesses among mankind because Allah mentions himself and his angels and the people of knowledge they are the ones who testify that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no God worthy of worship but him and the Shaykh says in this same meaning the meaning of affirming the truth and witnessing the truth and professing the truth you know speaking the truth telling people the truth is what is narrated by a Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and others from Abi Ishaq from al Agar, Abi Muslim that he witnessed uh, he witnessed Abu Huraira and Abu Sa'id al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with them both, saying that they witnessed that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Okay, so we witnessed, so he, he witnessed, Al Agar, Abi Muslim, said that he gave a testimony, that I give a witness, that I heard Abu Huraira and Abu Sa'id al Khudri witness that they said we give a witness we give a testimony that we heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say when the slave says la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says sadaqa abdi la ilaha illa ana wa ana akbar when a servant says la ilaha illallah and allahu akbar Allah says sadaqa abdi my slave told the truth that is the meaning of Iman, the linguistic meaning of Iman. To affirm that something is true. So now Allah is saying that when you say La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allah says, My slave spoke the truth. There is no God but me and I am Al Akbar. I am the greatest. And when the slave says La ilaha illallah wahda, Allah says, Sadaqa abdi, my slave told the truth. La ilaha illa ana wahti. There is no God but me alone. And when the slave says, La ilaha illa Allah wahtahu la sharika la. Allah says, Sadaqa abdi, la ilaha illa ana la sharika li. When he says, La ilaha illa Allah wahtahu la sharika la, Allah says, my slave told the truth. There is no God worthy of worship but me and I have no partner. And when the slave says, La ilaha illallah, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd, Allah says, Sadaqa abdi, la ilaha illa ana, li al mulk wa li al hamd. Allah says, There is no God worthy of worship but me. To me belongs the dominion and to me belongs all praise. And when the slave says, La ilaha illallah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, this Allah says, Sadaqa abdi, my slave told the truth. There is no God worthy of worship but me and there is no power and no ability to change anything except through me. There is no change in power. Al-Hawl, yani we can say here, to the ability to change something. And al quwa power. And there is more than that, but just as a brief description. la hawla wa la quwa, there is no ability to change anything. Nor is there any power except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a beautiful hadith. And a virtue of saying these things. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, wahda. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la. La ilaha illallah, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd. La ilaha illallah, la hawla wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Five beautiful short things, you all know them. When you say them, Allah says, Sadaqa Abdi. My slave told the truth. And that is affirming the truth, and that is Iman. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Mu'min. Abu Ishaq said, Then Al Agar in the same hadith, Abu Ishaq said, then Al-Aghar, Aghar is the one who witnessed Abu Huraira and Abu Sa'id, Al-Khudri. He said, Al-Aghar said something I didn't understand. 
he whispered something like I couldn't understand what he said I said to Abu Ja'far so this is the, this is the narrator Abu Ishaq is narrating from Al-Aghar Abi Muslim he said Al-Aghar said something I didn't understand so I said to Abi Ja'far one of his other students what did he say he said Man razaqahunna inda mawtihi lam tamas lam tamassahun nar Whoever is granted these five words when they die they will never be touched by the fire These five phrases when they die they will never be touched by the fire So very important that we learn these five phrases and like to, and I'll give you a benefit any what the ulama say about this We hear whoever says la ilaha illallah will enter jannah Whoever says these five phrases when they are dying, which we went over, they will not be touched by the fire. How do you get that? The scholars say you get that by saying them now. When you say them regularly now, what will happen when you die? You revert to your type. You revert to your nature. So when you are dying, you revert to your nature. If your nature is listening to music... Allahu Musta'an, how many people will die singing a song? That is your nature, that's what you have lived with your life with and brought yourself with and spent your days with. That is what you will end your days with. But you live your life saying these words and you stick to them, you remember them and you say them, then inshaAllah ta'ala at the time of your death you will be given them to say when you die. And you know the famous uh, narration from one of the two, one of the Raziyain, two Imam al Razi, uh, the uh, Abu Zura and uh, Abu Hatim, and I think it was Abu Hatim, if I'm not mistaken, one of the two, that when he died, or he was dying, he was on his deathbed, and he's a very famous scholar of hadith, scholar of the Sunnah, scholar who pushed people to have the right belief, very strict on his belief, a scholar of the Sunnah, scholar of hadith. When he came to his deathbed, his student said, Let us remind him to say La ilaha illallah. So a group of students came and they said, We felt shy to just say to him. So we said, We'll narrate the hadith to him because he narrated the hadith to them. So they started narrating the hadith to them. And when they got to the chain, they got emotional and they couldn't say any more and they just choked. You know, they just. Stopped and they had to go back So they tried and a few students tried Until the sheikh got kind of You know, I don't know whether he got the idea Or he just got frustrated with them So he said I was narrated to by so and so Who narrated me that so and so Who narrated me that so and so said Who narrated me that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Whoever says La ilaha illallah And he died he didn't even finish the words enters Jannah. And he, Allah Azza wa Jal, inshaAllah, saved that for after he died. But why did he die like that? Because that was his life. His whole life he's narrating hadith from the Prophet. ﷺ. His whole life he's narrating chains of narration. And look that he's in his death, he's about to die, and he still mentions the chain. He doesn't say the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says La ilaha illallah, whoever dies saying La ilaha illallah will enter. Jannah. Instead, he said, whoever dies saying la ilaha, he rents a whole chain, then whoever dies saying la ilaha illallah, and then he passed away. But the point of this is, how do you die? You die generally, for most people, you die how you live. For, for many people, if you're truthful. As for the one, what do you say about Muhammad Tim? What do you say about the one? Who does the action of the people of Jannah until there's nothing between him and Jannah except this much, a dhira', this much. Then he goes to the fire. We say this person did not live a life of the people of Jannah. La wallah. He lived a life of the people of Jannah in the eyes of the people. As for someone living the life of the people of Jannah in the doing the deeds of the people of Jannah in the, in, in reality, in the sight of Allah And then going to the hellfire This is mustahil, it cannot happen, ever This is a person 
who did the action of the people of Jannah in the eyes of the in the eyes of the people. So the people say, MashaAllah, Salah, MashaAllah, knowledge, MashaAllah, teaching, MashaAllah, Quran, Hafiz. But Allah Azza wa Jal knew that his heart was not true. His heart was not sincere. When is Allah Azza wa Jal Afiyah? Subhanallah. His heart was not sincere. And what happened? All those actions, the moment he dies, he dies upon the, the belief of the people of the hellfire. The end of his life is so khatima. And he has a he has a bad end. So the point is that generally, a sunnah of Allah is that you die as you live. So if you stick to these words now and say them frequently, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, when you die, you will say them, inshallah. But you have to say them now. And like we said, and like I had authentic stories narrated to me of people who, I mean, like young guys, you know, they like to go out in the car, they like to blast the music. They have a car crash, the ambulance comes to them, and he's dying singing his song that he was listening to in the car. You want to meet Allah like that, subhanAllah. So you have to think about how you live now to set forth how you're going to have, what kind of ending you're going to have to your life, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. And the evidence for this is found in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا Huda, Allah gives an increase in guidance to those who are guided. So if you're guided, what happens? You keep getting guided. Guided, you keep getting guided. Guided, you keep getting guided. Eventually what happens in your death? You are guided to a good end. The Shaykh said this is an amazing testimony, a great testimony. Of Allah testi- testifying to His oneness and giving and bearing the truthfulness of those or, or giving truthfulness to those people who testify to that from His servants. And this is Allah Azza wa Jal affirming the truth of the servants who testify to His Tawheed. So His servants who say that He is one and He has no partner, Allah says, that they have told the truth. And Allah Azza wa Jal is giving them, and this is the second part, Allah Azza wa Jal is giving them ta'yid bil hujjah wal burhan. Allah is giving them aid, Allah is helping them by giving them dalil and giving them evidences and proofs. So imagine the prophets. The prophets are the greatest human beings that testify to Allah's oneness. They testified to the truth. But why did the people believe them? Why did the people believe them? Because Allah Azza wa Jal gave them the hujjah, gave them the evidence and gave them the burhan, the clear proofs so that the people would believe them. And that is also a part of al-mu'min. The one who testifies to the truth of those who are truthful and supports them with proofs and evidences. The Shaykh said, all of this is from the indications of the meaning of the name of Al Mu'min. Ibn Al Qayyim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, from Allah's names is Al Mu'min. And it has one of two explanations, as we said, yeah? It has one of two explanations. One of them is Al Musaddiq Al Yusaddiq Sadiqin. The one who attests or attests to the truth of the truthful. And he gives them or he bears witness to those or he gives them aid for those things that will that will be a proof for their truthfulness and he shows a proof of their truthfulness he is the one who showed the truthfulness of his messengers and his prophets in that which they transmitted from him and he testified that they are truthful with the evidences that they by giving them the evidences that prove their truthfulness So Allah Azza wa Jal gave the prophets 
evidences that proved their truthfulness. And Allah Azza wa Jal informed us and His information is always the truth and His statement is always the truth. That He is going to show His servants the signs and the miracles that exist on the horizons and within themselves. That which is going to show them that the revelation that Allah sent down with His messengers is the truth. So Allah Azza wa has given you things on the horizon, any things you can see in the world, and things within yourselves that prove that what the prophets informed you about is the truth. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ We will show them our signs on the horizons and in themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. It becomes clear to them that this, i.e. this Qur'an, this message is the truth. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ كَفَرْتُمْ بِهِ Say, do you not see or have you not seen? If this is truly from Allah and then you have disbelieved in it. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِ بِرَبِّكَ أَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ Or is it not sufficient for your Lord that He is a witness over everything? And we said the witness over everything is the one who attests to who is true and who is not true and that is from the meanings of Al-Mu'min. Continuing the statement of Ibn Al-Qayyim, he said So He subhanahu wa ta'ala bears witness to his messenger that what his messenger was given is the truth and promises him that he will show the servants of Allah the signs of this truthfulness through what, it, what is done through things that are done and through that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates that which will also give them a sign that this is the truth. I mean, the miracles that the Prophet ﷺ did, the signs in the universe, the signs in yourself, that also show that this is the truth. Then he mentioned that he is greater than that. His testimony is greater than that. Meaning that the, the signs you see, the miracles you see, and the signs you see in the universe are great. But Allah is greater than that. Allah's witness is more of a proof than that. And that His witness is greater than every other thing. That is the end of the speech of Ibn al-Qayyim. Rahimahullah ta'ala. So if you see how Ibn al-Qayyim talks about, it's interesting because it talks about two ways. The signs of Allah in the universe and in yourself can lead you to the Qur'an which affirms for you those signs. That's one way. That's one direction. So you, you are reflecting upon the signs of Allah in the universe and that leads you to explore the Qur'an and then to affirm that it is the truth. And the other way is that the Qur'an, you read the Qur'an and hearing the Qur'an makes you think about the signs of Allah in the universe which confirm what the Qur'an is saying. So these signs are a witness for the Qur'an and uh, the Qur'an tells us that you will, find, uh, yani you will find the truth, you will be able to find an affirmation of the truth in these signs. And this is the meaning of Qatada, rahimahullah ta'ala, the great tabi'i, when he said, Al-mu'minu amana li qawlihi annahu haq. 
He said Al-Mu'min is the one Who affirms the truthfulness of his speech That it is true Who affirms for his speech That it is true Amana liqawlihi He affirms for his speech That it's the truth What is the other meaning of Al-Mu'min So the other meaning of Al-Mu'min Is from Al-Aman Al-Aman as you know is safety and Security Which usually comes after Al-Khawf Because Allah Azza wa Jal said That he would replace your Khawf With Amna He will Surely replace your Khawf Your fear with Aman, with safety And security So here Al-Mu'min is the one Who gives safety To the person after they have felt fear Al-Mu'min is the one who gives safety To a person after, having, after them having tasted fear So he said كَمَا أَنَّ مِن دَلَائِلِ إِسْمِهِ الْمُؤْمِن تَأْمِينُ الْخَائِفِ تَأْمِينُ الْخَائِفِ Making the scared person feel safe again after they, after they felt scared and that is by giving the person Al-Aman Giving them a feeling of A sense of safety A sense of security After they had had Al-Ikhafa They had a sense of fear And a sense of worry He gave them a sense of safety And a sense of security Like Allah Azza wa Jal said Al-Ladhi ata'amahum min ju'in Wa amanahum Amanahum this is from Al-Mu'min the same word comes from Amanahum from Al Mu'min. Amanahum min khawf. He gave them safety after they had fear. Or he gave them safety in, in so that they didn't have fear. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, as we said, Wala yubeddilannahum min ba'di khawfihim amna. And he will certainly replace for them After their fear Safety and security In Surah An-Nur Ayah number 55 And Ibn Abbas Radiyallahu anhuma Said Al-Mu'min Ay Ammana khalqahu Min an Yadlimuhum Min an Yadlimahum he made his creation safe from him oppressing them. So he would never oppress his creation. He gave them safety from that. He said, you are safe from that. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Your Lord will never oppress anyone. He gave them safety from that. He made them safe. He told them, أَمَّنَهُمْ He said to them, you are safe from that. So Ibn Abbas took the meaning of Al-Mu'min as meaning that he has promised safety to his slaves that they will not be oppressed, there will not be any injustice done to them. The Shaykh then he said, so everyone in a state of fear who is truthful in going to Allah will find that Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Mu'min and Allah will give him safety from his fear. So the security of people and the security of a country is in the hands of Allah alone. And if we want safety and we want security for ourselves we want safety and security from the country, for the country that we live in. And this comes from Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Because Allah is Al-Mu'min, the one who gives aman. The one who gives safety and security to the people. And that's true when you fear, you know, subhanAllah. I often think that this comes to light the most in Ar-Ruqya, Ar-Shari'ya. And for me anyways. And when we do Rukia, and we're going to talk about the Rukia workshop, you know, why would you not fear? 
Like why would you not fear? Yani you're surrounded by the jinn and the shayateen and the doors are banging open, the windows are coming, the lights are coming off, the people are levitating, the things are coming across, thrown across the room. Why would you not fear? Except that Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Mu'min. The one that if you turn to him and you recite his Quran and you make dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from that fear. Fear is something natural. Allah fear is something natural. But Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who can take your fears away. So this is a good dua, you know, when you fear that you have a fear, you feel scared to call upon Allah by his name, Al Mu'min. To call upon Allah by Al Mu'min, the one who secures you from your fears. This is a good a good etiquette in dua. So from what has preceded, we have learnt that al-mu'min has two great meanings. We can summarize them in the following statements. So we can summarize the name al-mu'min by talking about Allah's witness for himself with tawheed. That he is the greatest witness and he is witnessing the greatest thing that there is no God that deserves to be worshipped except him and we can also say that included in that is Allah testifying to the truth of the people who witness Tawheed for him so the people who say La ilaha illallah for Allah Allah testifies to their truth and says that what they said is the truth and it is correct and Allah Azza wa Jal giving truth to his prophets through giving them proofs and clear evidences that what they said and what they narrated from Allah is the truth in which there is no doubt and it is correct which there can be no question about and from this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now how, how can we put this well in English when Allah makes his promise come true that is a kind of showing the truth of what he said I try that slowly yeah? because it's sadaqa wa'da yani sadaqa wa'dahu he, he was true in his promise But why is that? When Allah (coughs) is true in His promise, when Allah brings His promise to come, so Allah promises you He's going to help you, and then the help comes, this is showing the truth of what Allah said the first time. So when Allah promises you victory and security in the land, this is Allah Azza wa Jal is affirming the truthfulness of His promise by delivering it. Affirming the truthfulness of his promise by delivering it. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, ثُمَّ صَدَقْنَاهُمُ الْوَعْدِ فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُمْ وَمَنْ نَشَاء Then we gave truth to our promise. And we showed them that our promise is true. That's by me the best one. We showed them that our promise is true. So we saved them and whoever else we willed in Surah Al-Anbiya And Allah Azza wa Jal said وَعِدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah promised those who believe among you and do good deeds لَيَسْتَخْرِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Allah will give them authority in the land as He gave authority to those who came before them وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ and Allah will certainly make it easy for them to practice their religion that He is happy for them, that He is content for them to practice. And He will certainly replace for them after their fear, safety, and security. They will worship me and they will not make any partner with me. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ And whoever disbelieves after that, they are the rebellious. 
So look at how Allah Azza wa Jal It's linked to the truthfulness That Allah is showing you That His promise is true Because when it happens You're getting a demonstration That the promise of Allah is true And from it Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Makes his believer, be, believing slaves and his awliya, those people who have taqwa of him, safe from his punishment and his retribution. So you're safe. This is from an aman. Because if you're worried about safety for yourself in terms of your, your, your physical health, how about on the day of judgment? You're going to also want safety. Who is the one who gives safety on the day of judgment? Al Mu'min. The one who gives safety to the people. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, "Alladina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanahum bidhul, ulaika lahum al amnu wa hum muhtadun." Those who believe and do not mix their belief with oppression, it is they who will have al aman. They will be safe, and they will be guided. And as Allah Azza wa Jal said, "Afamay yulqa fi nnar khayr, amma yati amin yom al qiyama." Is the one who is thrown in the hellfire better or the one who comes in a state of security on the day of judgment? And Allah Azza wa Jal said, Inna ladina qalu rabbuna allahu thumma istaqamu fala khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. Those who believe are those who say our Lord is Allah and then they stand firm upon the religion of Islam. There is no fear for them nor will they grieve. And from it, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill what he promised them from the greatest of success by entering into them them into entering them into Jannat al Naim, the gardens of the eternal gardens of paradise. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, Waqalu alhamdulillahi ladi sadaqana al waqalu alhamdulillah. وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين. And they said Alhamdulillah, the one who. وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده. That's what I was looking for. I knew something. I'm not going in my head. وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا they will say all praise is due to Allah The one who showed us that his promise is true Showed us the truth of his promise And gave us the, the right to roam around the earth We go through paradise wherever we want So how great is the reward of those who work hard and from it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you safe from your fear by giving you a sense of security which is opposite to a sense of fear. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, الَّذِي أَطَعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ The one who gave them food after they were hungry and made them safe after they, were, after they feared. So that is Al-Mu'min. Now the Shaykh has a few paragraphs regarding As-Sadiq. Sheikh has a few paragraphs on the topic as we said Al-Mu'min and As-Sadiq He says As for the name of Allah As-Sadiq It came in one ayah in the book of Allah And this is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّمْنَا كُلَّ ذِي ذُفُرْ وَمِنَ الْبَقَرِ وَالْغَنَمِ حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ شُحُومَهُمَا إِلَّا مَا حَمَلَتْ ظُهُورُهُمَا أَوْ الْحَوَايَا أَوْ مَا اخْتَلَطَ بِعَظْمٍ ذَلِكَ جَزَيْنَاهُمْ بِبَغْيِهِمْ وَإِنَّا لَصَادِقُونَ The ayah talks about the Jews and that they were forbidden from uh, certain things. Now, at this point, I'm definitely going to get my tafsir out for these terms because it's, it's a little uh, the, the, uh, I want to get the English words right so let's go to Surah Al-An'am
the translation of it that I have here and to those who are Jews we forbade every animal with an undivided hoof and we forbade them the fat of the ox and the sheep except for what adheres to the backs or their entrails or what is mixed up with a bone this is how we recompense them for their rebellion and verily we are the truthful and this is the shahid from the ayah وَإِنَّا لَصَادِقُونَ We are the, the truthful. So a sadiq is the one who is truthful. Meaning the one who's, and the shaykh said, he expanded it here. He said, why did Allah say at the end of the ayah about the punishment that he gave to the Jews? وَإِنَّا لَصَادِقُونَ And verily we are the truthful. What's the link? The Sheikh said the link is he's truthful in his threats of punishments and his promises of reward. Meaning that the promise of reward is truthful and the promise of punishment is truthful. So again, when you're asking Allah for a reward, this could be a name that you could use in your dua. That Allah is a sadiq, ya sadiq. That Allah is a sadiq. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who his reward is truthful But also his punishment is truthful And he punished them as he had promised And everything that Allah tells you is truthful Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said There is no doubt that Allah has promised those who obey him that he will reward them and promised those who make dua to him that he will answer them and he is a sadiq he is the truthful one the one who never breaks his promise as Allah said وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا the tr- promise of Allah in truth and who is more truthful than Allah in speech And from the signs of believing in this name Is that the one who does good Should not fear from Allah That Allah will oppress him That Allah Azza wa Jal will oppress him There's another word that Sheikh uses here That I want to also look up Okay, to cut, he will not cut off his reward. He will not cut off his reward. He will not oppress him and he will not cut off his reward. And he doesn't fear that Allah will shortchange him. He doesn't fear that Allah is going to shortchange him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, or is that Allah is going to do any injustice to him. وَلَا رَهَقَ And that there is not even a single atom's weight of good that will be lost. When you come on the day of judgment, don't fear that anything, the good that you did has been lost. Every, even every small, the tiniest atom's weight of good that you did will be kept for you. Because Allah Azza wa Jal has promised and He is a sadiq that he will give those people who act in good, who work hard, he's going to give them their rewards. Even if it is as small as a corn or as small as an atom, Allah Azza wa Jal will surely give the reward of it. And he will not cause anything to be lost. Rather, he will increase that tiny atom until it becomes bigger and bigger for whoever he wants. And whoever he wishes, he will give him a huge reward with him. As for the one who does good, as for the one, sorry, who does evil, then he will be only given equal to what he did. He's not going to be given double, treble, quadruple is evil. He's just going to be given equal to what he did. And it will be wiped away from him with tawbah, with regret, with istighfar, asking for forgiveness, 
with doing good deeds and with al-masaib calamities. Five things, five things that wipe out bad deeds. A tawbah, which is com- a complete set of things. It is to regret, to stop doing it and intend never to do it in the future and make up for what you've done. To regret, stop doing it, never do it in the future, intend never to do it in the future and to make up for it. That's tawbah. The second thing that Allah wipes out the sins with is regret. Feeling sorry over what you did. Even if you're still having some problems with the future issues, but you feel sorry for what you've did, what you've done. Istighfar. What did we say istighfar? Difference between istighfar and tawbah? We said istighfar is asking Allah to cover up the bad consequences of the sin. Because the meaning of istighfar or al ghufran is to cover up. So it's asking Allah to conceal your sin and stop the consequences from happening to you. Bad consequences. And you can say istighfar without tawbah. Even if you haven't reached the point where you're crying over your sin, you can still ask Allah to cover up the bad consequences from it. And Allah wipes it out with al-hasanat, by doing good deeds. In al-hasanat, yudhibna sayyiat. Indeed, the good deeds make the bad deeds go away. And by al-masaib, the calamities you go through in your life, wipe out your bad deeds. You should never feel too sad when you, you have something bad happen to you. Inshallah, this is a kafara, a, a way of expiating for the bad, some of the bad things that might have been, that might have been done. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ نَتَقَبَّلُ عَنْهُمْ أَحْسَنَ مَا عَمِلُوا وَنَتَجَاوَزُ عَنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ فِي أَصْحَابِ الْجَنَّةِ وَعْدَ الصِّدْقِ الَّذِي كَانُوا يُعَدُونَ He said, they are those who we, and the believers, are those who we accept from them the best of what they used to do. Don't think that when you're a believer, Allah is going to take just a few of the good deeds that you did, just the low class ones you did. The best, He will reward you according to the best things that you did. If you did some things that were amazing and some things that were, you know, good and some things that were okay, Allah will reward you according to the best things that you did. And He will overlook the bad things that you did among the people of Jannah. You'll be among the people of Jannah. And look at what Allah said, Wa'ad al-Sidq, the promise of truth. Sadiq, the promise of the one who is truthful. That they were promised. وعد الصدق الذي كانوا يوعدون That is the end of the topic of المؤمن and the topic of الصادق We've covered a significant number of the names of Allah عز وجل I wanted to see, have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. 56. La, I'm not counting the chapters, the actual names. 56 names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Alhamdulillah, in this series so far we've covered. And it's taken us a, whole, a long time, Wallahi. But Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, we still have. At least, I would say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 30. At least, I would say, 20, 30, maybe 35 lessons left to finish the... So that's still like a full year's worth of classes left to be able to, uh, to finish this topic. 
couple of announcements inshallah first of all this is the last names of Allah class until after Ramadan as for after Ramadan there'll be some changes because I'm not going to be here full time anymore but inshallah ta'ala I'll still be here and we've more or less organized that I'm going to be basically uh, still volunteering with Kelly and giving classes inshallah I hope that's pretty much kind of agreed now inshallah so uh, the idea will be bi-idhnillahi ta'ala that the classes in some way will continue there's no doubt that when I'm not here full time they may not continue with the same frequency like we might not be able to have every Friday night and every Wednesday night and things like that but inshallah in some way or another it will, it will continue and as a bonus inshallah we hope that there will also be soon another speaker joining us to make it any inshallah two so you will have classes more classes starting as well as my classes on top yani, inshallah ta'ala so we're hopeful that we're going to get it's, things are getting even better inshallah ta'ala so the classes inshallah are going to continue we more or less fixed that up we haven't sorted the timetable yet I would expect it won't be the same as it is now but inshallah we'll be continuing the names of Allah class in some way or another we, if we do less times in a week we might try and do a longer session where we cover maybe more names or something we'll, we'll figure something out inshallah but we are going to try our best to finish the book we still have a year's worth of classes left to be able to uh, to finish the book uh, so it's well worth us you know us trying our best to finish if Allah <coughs> makes it easy for us um, next week is the Rukia uh, seminar it's the third Rukia seminar I've done at Kalima plus a Friday night reflections Rukia topic it's like the fourth the fourth kind of Rukia lecture but the third major seminar I've done this one is called A Journey Through Allah's Revelation so we're going to take a book of the ayat and the ahadith of Rukia and then what we're going to do with those ayat and ahadith is we're going to study them and understand Rukia from the Sunnah not Rukia from what the people say but from the Sunnah and from the Quran uh, as for Friday night reflections next week I'm not too sure how it's going to go yet we're trying to work something out it might be that we extend the Rukia seminar to include Friday night reflections as a Q&A as part of it it may be we come back here to Kelima and do another Friday night it may be that we cancel it we're still trying to organize with the venue and we're trying to work out the logistics will I be able to get back on time will I be able to speak to you guys or I'm going to be just completely you know drained from the talking we're going to try and work something out we'll let you know by text message whether the class is going to go ahead uh, if it doesn't go ahead then I'm sure I will uh, in any case I will see some of you at the seminar and for those who I don't inshallah ta'ala of course Ramadan coming up so we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make Ramadan for us uh, a beneficial a month of benefit for us and to make it a reason to increase us in Iman and Taqwa and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach Laylatul Qadr and to benefit from it and to be among those that Allah Azza wa Jal frees from the hellfire in the nights of Ramadan and give, accepts the fast during the days so inshallah ta'ala that's what Allah has made easy we still give time for Q&A inshallah ta'ala for those who want to stay those who would like to go if you use the, the back door inshallah so we don't disturb um, but inshallah you, like, you, I don't force you guys to, to stay any like Q&A sisters also can send the questions down with one of the kids inshallah now nah. I think attest, uh, attesting to something. Put it through. A, put it through your Arabic dictionary and see what you get. The, see what you get coming out. We'll, we'll, we'll pick that one. Let me have a look. I'm surprised, Turan, you haven't put it through yet. Yours. Con- yeah, confirmation. Confirmation is good. I like that word for iqrar. Okay, to endorse comes in my dictionary. To endorse, to confirm, confirm something, yeah. To confirm something, to endorse something, that's a good word for it. That tasdiq means to affirm the truth from a sidq. So the root of tasdiq is sidq. 
يعني صدق يعني أثبت أنه صادق he affirmed that what he said is the truth إقرار أقر يعني أقره إقرار he endorsed it you know to give an endorsement that is both of them are come in a similar meaning but they're not the same one is based on sidq and one is based on uh, confirmation or endorsement to confirm something or endorse something the other one is based on truthfulness any yani to to be to uh, to show that something is true No, both of them are included. It's tafsir tanawwur. It's tafsir where there are two things that both of them are the same. See, if you take the Arabic uh, of uh, amina ya'manu and then you make it form four, it becomes amana. You need to give safety, to give aman. You need amanahum min khawf. And from that you get the, the ism fa'il is al mu'min. Likewise, if you have uh, from Iman, Amana Yu'minu from Iman, then from there comes Al Mu'min. Both of them are true for Allah Azza wa Jal. And we always in tafsir of the names of Allah take the widest tafsir as long as it is true for Allah. And he, because the names of Allah are deep, they're not just like one meaning, they have many multiple meanings. We take them both. Yes, some of the scholars said one and some of them said the other. But when we look at a tafsir, like tafsir of the Qur'an, when you look at a tafsir of an ayah, and the two different ayat, both of them, the both of the two ayat say the, the, or both of the two tafsirs of the ayah say something that doesn't contradict, then we take both. Because we call it tafsir tanawur. It is a... It's a complementary tafsir. The tafsir, com- one complements the other. One doesn't contradict. The opposite of that is tafsiru tadad. Tafsir which is contradictory. In this case, you have to pick which one is right. But now, neither of them contradict. Both of them are true. Allah is the one who affirms the truth of things. And Allah Azza wa is the one who provides safety and security. Both of them are, are true. And both of them come to al-mu'min. Naam. Who else had a question? I'll go with the brother. I'm going to get to everyone, don't worry, inshallah. Bismillah. Naam. Mm. Which two did you get? Ah, the five phrases. Okay. So the five phrases. So what did we get? We can help me from who's got the notes. We had La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. La ilaha illallah, and Allah is the greatest. That's one. And we had La ilaha illallah, wahda. La ilaha illallah, wahda. And La ilaha illallah, wahda. And we had La ilaha illallah, wahdahu, la sharika la. And we had لا إله إلا الله له الملك ووحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد ولا إله إلا الله له الملك وله الحمد لا إله إلا الله له الملك وله الحمد أن ويحد لا إله إلا الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله and the hadith is uh, we mentioned the source of the hadith hadith is in uh, Tirmidhi ibn Majah Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah. Um, no. Why did they disagree? Kathir, they, they, they disagreed because they didn't like it's n- they, this is very common. And in tafsir, it's very common. You have Ibn Abbas and Mujahid because at the end, Mujahid became a great scholar. And a great scholar doesn't have one source of information. Also, it's possible that Ibn Abbas gave more than one tafsir. The tafsir that is narrated from Ibn Abbas is the one that we mentioned. But it's very possible that when, it, when he was teaching Mujahid that he gave more than one. But Mujahid met others from the, from the companions. So, and he became a great scholar. And when you know you become, a, you definitely don't have one, only one source of information. So you, you have uh, multiple sources. So. <coughs> Yeah. 
Yes, you may do. Or, you may do or separately. No. You may do them together. You may do them together or you may do them separately. You may do all five. But the hadith who says whoever is given them at the time of death, any all five. Whoever at the t- when, as he knows he's dying, and he, maybe he feels that he's, you know, he feels that it's, his time is up. He says, "La ilaha illallah wahda." He says, "La ilaha illallah wahda la sharika la." He says, "La ilaha illallah Allahu akbar." He says, "La ilaha illallah lahu mulku lahu hamd." He says, "La ilaha illallah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah." This person will not be lam tamassahu nar. He will not be touched by the fire. No, the hadith says Man razaqahunna Who is given all of them at the time of death But any of them, yes Any of them because it comes under the hadith Whoever's the last Man kana akhir kalami fi dunya La ilaha illallah dakhal al-jannah Whoever is the last thing he says in the dunya Is la ilaha illallah will enter jannah So any of them are good But if you can get all five You got all the hadith like we always love to get everything in one, you know. Like you got, if you can say all five, you got the hadith. The last thing you said is La ilaha illallah, and you got the hadith that whoever says these five will not be touched by the hellfire. So you'll not be touched by the hellfire, and you enter jannah. Join between the two. Now, do we have any more questions? I didn't see from the sisters any questions. Usually they sent. Ah, here we come. Mashallah. Jazakallahu khayran Tawfiq, you don't have any Habibi? No questions? Never mind Can you please tell the meaning of Sadaqa wa'dahu wa nasara abda This is from what you say on As-Safa wal Marwa La ilaha illallah wahda Anjaza wa'da Wa nasara abda وَهَزَمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدَ As for صَدَقَ uh, وَعْدَ I don't know if it's a different narration What I remember from the narration is أنج, uh, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَ أَنْجَزَ وَعْدَ وَنَصَرَ عَبْدَ وَهَزَمَ الْأَحْزَابَ وَحْدَ But صَدَقَ وَعْدَ and أَنْجَزَ وَعْدَ both mean the same thing Maybe it's a different narration or maybe it's a different dua يعني, But صَدَقَ وَعْدَ who comes in the Quran Comes in the Quran Like صَدَقَ then we gave truth, we showed them the truth of our promise. This comes more than once in the Quran. But in the hadith, what I remember from the dua is it comes in the dua of uh, as Safa and Al Marwa. Uh, no, what is it? Sister saying ayah or dua or hadith. If you go back to the video, I was reading you ayat and dua and hadith, which it comes in. And it comes in all of them, but in different wordings. Okay, you said five of things but mentioned two of them. La wallah, I mentioned five of them. Yani, Allah bless you, but I mentioned all five. I said at tawbah, and I said regret, and I said doing good deeds, and I said calamities, and what was the other one? Istighfar. And we explained it in detail, maybe the audio cut off in the sister section at that time. When a slave says, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد Is this the only one to be recited often? No, no, you recite all of them often All of them, يعني all of them often All of them All five together, separately All of it is خير Because this is from the, the dua which is mutlaq it's not from the dua which is muqayyid. You have dua on muqayyid and dua on mutlaq. A dua which is muqayyid, I think Musa'ad Abdul Rahman told you about this. Uh, a dua which is muqayyid is to be said at a certain time in a certain number. And a dua which is mutlaq, any dua which is restricted, restricted with a certain time or number. Dua which is mutlaq, you say any time, all the time, whenever you want. In any number that you want, without intending a fixed number. You don't intend 10 or 20, just whatever you want, whenever you want. Because it's an unrestricted dua Or an unrestricted dhikr And I think Ustaz Abdul Rahman explained a little bit about that to you guys last time Okay We'll stop there inshallah Jazakumullah khairan wa barakallahu feekum Wallahu a'lam Wa salatu wa salam Ala nabina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Ajma'in